Welcome to Audiobook 365 Stories. Emma and Harriet were walking together one morning. Emma thought they had talked enough about Mr. Elton for that day. She did not think Harriet needed more comfort, and Emma did not feel guilty anymore. So, she tried very hard to stop talking about Mr. Elton. But, just when she thought they had stopped, Harriet talked about him again. Emma was saying how hard it is for poor people in winter, but Harriet only said, Mr. Elton is so kind to the poor. Emma knew she had to do something else to change the topic. They were getting close to Mrs. Bates and Miss Bates' house. Emma decided to visit them because talking to other people would help. Mrs. and Miss Bates loved when people came to see them, and Emma knew some people thought she did not visit them enough. Even Mr. Knightley had told her this before, and she sometimes felt it herself. But she found visiting them boring and a waste of time. She also did not like meeting the less important people in the town who were always visiting Mrs. Bates and Miss Bates. So, Emma did not visit them often. But now, Emma made a quick decision to stop at their house. She told Harriet that it was safe to visit now because they would not have a letter from Jane Fairfax today. The house belonged to a family who worked in business. Mrs. and Miss Bates lived on the first floor. It was a small but cozy room, and when Emma and Harriet came in, they were very warmly welcomed. Mrs. Bates, an old and quiet lady, was sitting in the warmest corner with her knitting. She even wanted to give her seat to Emma. Her daughter, Miss Bates, talked a lot and was very kind. She thanked them for visiting, worried about their shoes, asked about Emma's father's health, and happily shared how her own mother was doing. She also offered them some cake from the cabinet. Mrs. Cole just visited us, she said. She was so kind. She only wanted to stay for ten minutes, but she stayed for an hour. She ate a piece of cake and said it was very good. So, I hope Miss Woodhouse and Miss Smith will also eat a piece. When Miss Bates talked about Mrs. Cole, she quickly started talking about Mr. Elton, too. Mrs. Cole was close to Mr. Elton, and she had heard from him after he left town. Emma knew this was coming. They would have to talk about his letter again and talk about how long he had been away, who he was spending time with, how popular he was, and how busy the ball was. Emma listened and smiled, making sure Harriet did not have to speak. Emma was ready for this conversation when she entered the house. She planned to talk about Mr. Elton once and then move on to other topics, like the women of Highbury and their card games. But she was not ready for Jane Fairfax to be the next topic. However, Miss Bates quickly stopped talking about Mr. Elton and started talking about a letter from her niece, Jane Fairfax. Oh, yes, Mr. Elton, I understand, of course, about dancing. Mrs. Cole was telling me that the dancing at the rooms in Bath was, Mrs. Cole was so kind to spend some time with us, talking about Jane. As soon as she came in, she asked about Jane because Jane is so well-loved there. Whenever Jane visits, Mrs. Cole shows her a lot of kindness, and Jane really deserves it. So, Mrs. Cole asked about her right away. She said, I know you haven't heard from Jane recently because it's not time for her to write. But I quickly said, Actually, we have. We got a letter this morning. I've never seen anyone more surprised.
Mrs. Cole said. Really? Are you sure? That's so unexpected. Please tell me what she wrote. Emma quickly smiled and said politely, "Have you heard from Miss Fairfax so recently?" I'm very happy. I hope she is doing well. Thank you. You are so kind," replied Miss Bates, who was happily looking for the letter. Oh, here it is. I knew it couldn't be far. But I put my sewing kit on top of it without noticing, so it was hidden. I had it in my hand just a little while ago, so I was almost sure it was on the table. I was reading it to Mrs. Cole, and after she left, I read it again to my mother. A letter from Jane is such a pleasure for her; she never gets tired of hearing it. So I knew the letter was near. Here it is, just under my sewing kit. Since you want to hear what she says first, I must say sorry that Jane wrote such a short letter, only two pages. See, hardly two. Usually, she fills the whole paper and even writes in small spaces. My mother often wonders how I can read it so well. She always says. When I open the letter, well, Hetty, now you'll have a hard time reading that mess, right, ma'am? And I tell her I'm sure you would manage to read it if no one else could. You would figure out every word. And even though my mother's eyes aren't as good as before, she can still see really well with glasses. Thank God, it's such a blessing. Her eyes are still very good. Jane always says when she's here, "Grandmama, you must have had very strong eyes to see so well after all the fine work you've done." I hope my eyes stay as strong as yours. Miss Bates spoke so fast that she had to stop to catch her breath. Emma said something polite about how good Miss Fairfax's handwriting was. You are so kind," said Miss Bates. "Very happy. You are such a good judge and write so beautifully yourself. No one's praise could make us happier than Miss Woodhouse's. My mother can't hear well, you know. She's a little deaf, ma'am," she said, turning to her mother. "Did you hear what Miss Woodhouse kindly said about Jane's handwriting?" Emma had the strange experience of hearing her compliment repeated twice before Mrs. Bates understood it. Meanwhile, Emma was thinking about how she could leave without being rude. She was almost ready to hurry away with some excuse when Miss Bates spoke again and caught her attention. My mother's hearing problem is very small, as you see, nothing at all. I just need to raise my voice and repeat things two or three times, and she hears it. She's used to my voice, but it's funny that she always hears Jane better than she hears me. Jane speaks so clearly, but don't worry, my mother isn't any more deaf than she was two years ago, which is good at her age. It's really been two years since Jane was here. We've never gone so long without seeing her. I was just telling Mrs. Cole that we won't know how to do enough for her when she comes. Are you expecting Miss Fairfax soon? Asked Emma. Oh yes, next week. Really? That must be a great pleasure. Thank you. You are very kind. Yes, next week. Everyone is so surprised, and everyone says such kind things. I'm sure Jane will be just as happy to see her friends in Highbury as they are to see her. She's coming on Friday or Saturday. She can't say which day because Colonel Campbell might need the carriage one of those days. It's so kind of them to send her all the way, but they always do. Yes. Friday or Saturday next. That's what her letter is about.
That's why she wrote this time, because normally, we wouldn't hear from her until Tuesday or Wednesday. Yes, I thought so. I was worried that I wouldn't hear anything about Miss Fairfax today. You are so kind. No, we wouldn't have heard anything if it weren't for this special reason. She is coming to stay with us soon. My mother is so happy. Jane will stay with us for at least three months. She said so in the letter. You see, the Campbells are going to Ireland. Mrs. Dixon convinced her parents to visit her there. They didn't plan to go until summer, but Mrs. Dixon really wanted to see them again. Before she got married in October, she had never been away from them for more than a week. So it must be strange for them to be in different countries. She wrote a letter asking them to come to Dublin, and then they will all go back to Bally Craig, which is their beautiful home. Jane heard about how beautiful it is from Mr. Dixon. He showed her and Miss Campbell some drawings of the place, pictures he made himself. Jane really wanted to go to Ireland after hearing all this. At this point, Emma had a sudden thought about Jane Fairfax and Mr. Dixon. She wanted to know more and said, You must feel lucky that Miss Fairfax can come to you now. Since she is such close friends with Mrs. Dixon, you probably didn't expect her to be allowed to stay with you instead of going to Ireland. Yes, very true. That's what we were worried about. We didn't want her to be so far away from us for months. But luckily, everything worked out well. Mr. and Mrs. Dixon really want her to come to Ireland with Colonel and Mrs. Campbell. Their invitation was so kind and welcoming, Jane says in her letter. Mr. Dixon is very nice, especially after what happened at Weymouth. Jane was almost thrown into the sea because something on the boat spun around. If Mr. Dixon hadn't grabbed her quickly, she would have fallen into the water. I can't think about it without shaking. After that, I liked Mr. Dixon so much. But even though everyone wants her to go to Ireland, Miss Fairfax decided to stay with you and Mrs. Bates instead? Yes, it was completely her own choice. Colonel and Mrs. Campbell think she made the right decision. They want her to stay here because she hasn't been feeling well lately. I'm sorry to hear that. I think she made a good decision. But Mrs. Dixon must be disappointed. I've heard that Mrs. Dixon isn't very beautiful, not like Miss Fairfax. Oh no, you're right. Miss Campbell, Mrs. Dixon, was always plain looking, but she is very elegant and kind. Yes, of course. Jane caught a bad cold a long time ago, on the 7th of November, and she hasn't been well since. It's a long time for a cold to last, don't you think? She didn't tell us before because she didn't want us to worry. That's just like her, always so thoughtful. But she hasn't been well for a while, so her friends, the Campbells, think it's better for her to come home. They believe three or four months in Highbury will make her healthy again. It's much better for her to come here than to go to Ireland if she isn't well. No one can take care of her like we can. I agree. That sounds like the best plan. So she will come to us next Friday or Saturday, and the Campbells will leave for Holyhead the following Monday. You can see that in Jane's letter. Everything is happening so quickly. You can imagine, dear Miss Woodhouse, how busy I've been. If it weren't for her illness, we'd be so excited. I'm afraid she will look very thin and sick. I always read Jane's letters to myself before reading them to my mother 
in case there's anything that might upset her. Jane asks me to do that. But today, when I read that Jane was sick, I got so scared that I cried out, Oh no, poor Jane is ill. My mother heard it and got very worried. But when I read more, I realized it wasn't as bad as I thought, and now I've made my mother feel better. If Jane doesn't get well soon, we'll call the doctor. We won't worry about the cost, even though he's so kind that he probably wouldn't charge us. He has a family to take care of, and we couldn't let him work for free. Well, now that I've told you a little about Jane's letter, let's read it. I'm sure she tells her story much better than I can. I'm afraid we must go now, said Emma, looking at Harriet and starting to stand up. My father will be expecting us. I didn't plan to stay for more than five minutes when I first came in. I just stopped by to ask about Mrs. Bates, but I've had such a nice time. Now, though, we really must say goodbye. Even though Miss Bates tried to keep her, Emma and Harriet left. Emma was happy because, although she had to listen to most of the letter, she was able to avoid hearing the whole thing.